If you think about it, there's only about 20 tier one ISPs in the world. And mm. a tier one ISP is someone who has like a global network that bridges a continent. And so that's AT&T, Verizon. In Japan, it's NTT. And then you can go down to your regional carriers that maybe service like the Midwest or the Northeast, like RCN or something like that. But the tier one ISPs are the ones that really have all the power in these markets. And they're the ones that set all the peering arrangements. And so if you think about it, everyone's like, it's great that you can run an Ethereum node at home in your basement. This means Ethereum is really decentralized. Well, it's like on one level, sure, but it's not necessarily censorship resistant. And so you have to ask yourself, okay, if the government really goes after my node running on a shoebox in my basement, it's not, the problem isn't that it's running in a data center. What we've seen from China is like the Great Firewall of China is pretty good. And if the government tells AT&T to block all Ethereum nodes, you better believe they're going to do it. They gave the NSA a tap on all of our information back in 2001. So like these companies they are the major censorship point and choke point. And so part of the point of double zero is to work around them by creating parallel infrastructure that operates on dedicated connections where we can go faster than the public internet allows. We can do direct routing, unlike with a public internet where your data is routed all over the place. And we can have more censorship resistant networks because these networks are now no longer in the residential internet area. They're in commercial information services spaces.